In this video, I want to cover the different things that I tried when trying to figure out how to move uh, the character around on the screen. Uh, so at this point, you know, I figured out how to open up a window, how to grab a little piece of a sprite file, put the character on the screen, and that's about it, right? So, but now I want to move it around. And uh, I, there's a couple of problems that I ran into. I'll tell you about them now. The first uh, problem I ran into was choppy movement. Uh, I found it hard to to learn how to move the character smoothly, so it looked like you know it felt good to move the character around. Uh, the next problem I had was um, moving in multiple directions at once. So, for example, up and right. If I'm holding two keys down to go up and right, then I expect my character will move on the diagonal. So those two things were were hard to figure out. But I want to walk you through the different things I tried and how I ultimately found what I think is is the solution. At least it's it's working now. Um, so how is, first of all, how is player movement even done? Um, well, within the game loop here, you'll see in the code, uh, starting from where we left off in the last video, if you just want to check out um, the link, the commit uh, in the description below, start there. And you'll see within the game loop, I'm using an STL function to pull for events, different events. Now, um, the first event that we were looking at is the quit event. So that's, you know, uh, you click on the little X and it closes the window, then we should break the game loop and it exits the loop and then SDL destroys the window and quits. So I guess SDL does some cleanup there. Uh, the next type of event we can listen for is a key down event. Now, key down is like you've actually pressed the key on the keyboard, for example. And then we check, okay, which key has been pressed and in the, the example code here, I have an L and a space bar, and I'm just printing some things to the console to, to, to show that, yep, we registered that event, and this is, uh, it's working, right? The other event is a key up event, and that's when you've actually released a key, and both of them are important, or at least they were important in my first attempt, and I'll show that to you in a second. But then on these events, what are we actually doing? Well, we have to change the positioning of the character on the screen. Now, that means we should review what the entity is here. Um, the entity struct is made up of three parts. There's the texture, which is the image itself, uh, the source. So which, it, well, the source is like the, which part of the sprite, or where are we getting the image? Um, and then the destination is where do we want to put it? So if you, uh, let's see, I'll open up the sprite that I'm using in this example, uh, bardo.png. The source would be, well, the texture would be this file, and then the source would be which part of the file do we actually want to, to show. And in this case, I'm grabbing uh, XY coordinate 00, zero. So I'm starting at the top left of the, of the sprite file, the sprite image, and I'm carving out this little piece, width 24, height 38, which grabs the first Bardo image right here. Um, later on with movement, you, you actually cycle through these, you show different source images um, so it looks like he's animated and he's moving in different directions but for now we'll just stick with the first one to keep it simple uh, and then the destination is where do i actually want to put that and here is where you can select different positioning on this on the window but you can also change the scaling of the image so in this case i've increased it by four times just to make it a little bit bigger and i put it at 100 by 100 on the xy axis so let me just run it and you can see that i've taken that little part of the sprite and I've put it at 100 by 100 which corresponds to the top left corner of the image and I've scaled it up by four. Okay so that's what we're doing when we move a character we're changing the destination the source typically stays the same of course like I just said if you're doing animation or movement um, you will change the source as well depending on the direction and whatnot or the action you know if you're swinging a sword or something uh, but then the destination is what we're thinking about in terms of where it goes. So what did I try first? The first thing I tried is, well, key down event, um, the, care, the, the player has pushed down the A key, right? And that would mean that the player is trying to move to the left. So I, did, uh, I reached into my global variable here, the, the context. I looked at the player, the destination, and I would decrement the X coordinate by 10. So we can do 10, 20, 50, whatever. It just changes the speed of the movement. Actually, maybe I'll do 40 just so it's moving a little bit faster. So it moves to the left 40 pixels when the character, when the player pushes A, right? Next, when the player pushes uh, D, then that means we're going 
to the right. So we'll change the, the x coordinate. Uh, we'll increase it by 40. In the case of a W, the player is trying to move up. So we're now on the Y axis. And up would mean that we're decrementing Y by 40. And in the case of S, the player is trying to move down. And so we'll increase Y. Uh, we'll increment it by 40 pixels. So this is the thing that I tried first. And um, so whether they push or hold, whatnot, the, the player would keep moving in these directions. And uh, so let's recompile and we'll see what that looks like. Pay close attention how choppy it is. And then when I first first push it, you, you see a noticeable jump. And then if I continue to hold it, uh, it smooths out a little bit, but it's still quite choppy. Uh, further, uh, if I hold two keys at once, so let's say S and D, I want to move down towards the right there on a, on a diagonal. It doesn't handle that at all. I'm holding both keys well, there's a noticeable pause there, and then, but it doesn't move on the diagonal. It registers the last key pushed. So play around with it yourself and you'll see. So I was quite disappointed at this point. It wasn't working. It didn't feel like proper movement at all. So I did a lot of reading. Um, it was very hard to zero in on the actual cause of the problem. But here it is. You don't want to be changing positioning of an asset of a, of a player or a, a mob, for example, you don't want to update the positioning in the event handler. Why? Because the event handler isn't, it doesn't uh, pull the events, it doesn't handle the events at regular intervals, it varies. So that means that the movement won't be smooth. Instead, what you want to do is within the event handler, you want to update the state but outside the event handler is where you want to update the positioning. So what do I mean by updating the state? You just want to register whether or not the player, or which direction the player is moving in, if any. You just want to set some flags, some Boolean flags perhaps. And then outside the event handler, that's where you actually change the positioning. So I'm going to do that next. The next thing I tried was in my um, global context here, is I just had four flags. Um, I put moving left is a Boolean. Moving right, uh, up, and uh, down. That's what I did right there. And so when the key is pressed, rather than changing uh, the destination coordinates right here, I just flip the flag. So moving left is equal to true. Uh, let's see, moving right, up, down and I didn't update the coordinates at all. That's what I did. Now, of course, I want to stop moving when the key is released. It's not pressed anymore. So in that case, I also needed a, a pairing in the uh, key up event handler. So remove the L and the spacebar handlers. So in this case, when the A, uh, A key is released, I want to flip the, the movement to false. Same with D, W, and S. So when I press the key, it's moving true. When I release the key, moving false. Now, right now, all I've done is just flip the flags. I'm not actually moving the character yet. So it's outside of the event handler. This is where I have to check if the characters are moving. And if the character is moving, if it's moving left, here is where I want to um, update my coordinates, do 40, actually. Let's do this four times. Right. We'll be incrementing 40 up would be x coordinate again. Down would be, or sorry, y coordinate and y coordinate. Okay. So now, just based on those flags, uh, that's where I actually update my positioning. And then in render copy, we have the new positioning here. Um, and it'll render the, the character in its new position. So let's try this. You see how much smoother it is. Oh, it's quite fast. I'm going to change that. Let's change that to 10. OK, so it's much, much smoother. And further, I can move diagonally now. So you can just test that out for yourself. It feels much, much nicer. 
Now, this isn't all you need to do for player movement. There are other things that I'll cover in other videos, but for now, this was quite a win for me. I was quite happy with this. Uh, that said, uh, I wanted to make it even better. I wasn't entirely pleased with having to have um, these handlers in both a key down and a key up event. And I'd stumbled on uh, an example of another game. I think it was asteroids or something uh, where I'd saw that there's another SDL function that can be used to gather um, the keyboard state and update based on that. Rather than the key down events, what you can actually do is a scan for state. So you get this thing called uh, state, which is SDL get keyboard state. Uh, and the examples I saw just passed in uh, nil or null. So I just went with that. Uh, and then what this gives us is actually, I'll, I'll do it up here. State gives us um, an array of U8 pointers, pointers to U8s. So I take out that. Uh, and then what you can do is you can check, uh, the state is basically like a big mapping of different keys and whatnot and whether or not they're on. Um, so if state, uh, I believe it's SDL, scan code uh, A, if it's on, if, it, if A is being pressed, then it will be one. It'll be greater than zero. It'll be one. Uh, otherwise, it'll be zero. So we can set our state based on that. You see? up, down, so right would be um, D, up would be W, down would be S. So we just flip our state that way, and that allows us to just get rid of um, all this. Actually, get rid of all that. So we don't need all that um, key down, key up handlers anymore. We just update based on this each time. And I saw that, and that was much, much cleaner. So just recompile, it works just fine. And we have the same, same result, which is great, but less typing. So hopefully that helps. Um, if, uh, if you're running into problems with smoothness or handling multiple keys, uh, this is the way that I've arrived at. I've seen it in multiple uh, tutorials and other examples of games, and it's working out pretty well for me. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.